Welcome back. And I've got another unusual and interesting experiment for you today. What we're going to look at is the bimetallic strip. And then all you do is just put your drink down on the bar and you leave it alone. I'm not sure you expected that to happen and neither did I. So I've got a piece of metal here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat it up in a Bunsen flame and see what happens. So we'll just light the Bunsen, there we go, and I'll put this directly in the hottest part of the flame. And what you'll notice is as we heat it, it droops downwards. I guess it's what you'd expect. You'd probably think that the metal is heating up and melting slightly. But what I'm going to do is cool it down and then once I've cooled it down, I'm going to put it back in the flame, but not that way up, but the opposite way up. And let's see what happens. So I've turned over the piece of metal. There we go. And let's put it back in the hottest part of the flame and see what happens. Now, unless you'd seen this before, I think you'll probably be quite surprised. It clearly isn't caused by the metal melting. So let's cool it down. And you can see the slight bow upwards on it, so let's turn it over and put it in the flame. And it still bends the same way as it was before. I've just tipped it upside down. So turning it round like that just makes it bend upwards more. This is a very strange effect and we'll need some explaining. So the first record we have of this is from John Harrison, the guy who invented the amazing marine clocks. And he needed metals that would be temperature compensated. So perhaps he invented the bimetallic strip. So let's explain what's happening here. And to do that, I need a rather larger sample to show you what's going on. So um, this is a bimetallic strip that's much bigger. And what you'll notice, the hints in the name, is it's made of two metals. It's made of some copper and some steel bonded together very tightly with rivets. And what's interesting about those two metals is they have different thermal expansion coefficients. So when you heat them to a given temperature, one gets longer quicker than the other, and that will be the one that bows outwards. That will be the top of the bow, because it's growing more than the one underneath. But of course, if I turn it over, it's still the same two metals. They're still at the same temperature, but the one that grows in length quicker will be on the outside of the bow. So we'll have a brief look at some uses for this. Now, I hope you've seen my video on expansion, which explains what happens when materials expand, because it would help you explain what's happening in this case. But I did say I'd give you an idea of a few uses for these. Well, imagine this bimetallic strip is in a room that's a little bit cool, and we could attach it in a thermostat to an electrical circuit like this. And then when the room gets hotter, you'll see the metal bends out of the way and disconnects the circuit. And when it cools down, it'll go back to where it was and connect the heater back up again to warm up the room. They're also used in cars for the indicators. And when you hear the indicators going click, 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 that's actually a bimetallic strip as well. And that's going to be the subject of a video I'll do soon. So I hope you enjoyed that video on bimetallic strips and you learnt a little bit more about how they work and what their uses are. Anyway, another video coming soon and I look forward to seeing you then.